Hi, I'm Mike Seaman with 801 Power, and today I'll show you how to design a controller for a quasi-resonant or valley-switched flyback converter in Ada Designer. Ada Designer's advanced control features make it easy to design a complex controller. The flyback converter is an indirect, isolated converter frequently used in AC adapters. This tutorial will consider a 65-watt laptop adapter as a test case. The AC line input is rectified using a bridge rectifier, which charges a large bulk capacitor. In the non-PFC case, the flyback converter essentially operates as a DC to DC converter from this bulk capacitor voltage. In our analysis, we replace the input rectifier with a DC source, ranging from 90 volts to 350 volts. This will make our simulation faster. Now, let's take a look at the operation of the standard fixed frequency flyback converter. At the beginning of each period, the primary side transistor turns on, charging the transformer's magnetizing inductance. In this case, we are using a current mode controlled converter, so the switch turns off when the primary current reaches the value set by the air amplifier. When the primary side transistor turns off, the drain voltage shoots up and rings, and is clamped by the primary side clamp. The magnetizing current is immediately transferred through the transformer to the secondary side and charges the output through the output diode or synchronous rectifier. In this mode, the transformer current ramps down to zero. This example considers discontinuous mode, or DCM, operation, where the transformer current goes to zero in each period. After the diode or synchronous rectifier turns off, the primary side drain current rings for the remainder of the period before the transistor turns on. When the primary side transistor turns on, it will discharge the remaining voltage on its drain, causing capacitive switching loss. Let's now examine quasi-resonant or valley switching operation. The goal is to minimize switching loss by turning on the primary side transistor at a valley in the switching voltage waveform. At full load, we typically want to switch at the first valley, which corresponds to quasi-resonant operation. Because this is a variable frequency control strategy, the switching frequency will then increase at lighter loads. To prevent an excessive switching frequency, we will skip some valleys at light load to decrease the average switching frequency. The key to implementing a valley switched flyback is to sense the voltage across the transformer and to switch out a valley. We will use an auxiliary winding for this purpose. The next step is to define the controller. In Ada Designer, controllers are designed by placing constraints on the edges of the gating waveforms. Here we have waveforms for the primary side transistor as well as the synchronous rectifier transistor. Let's take a look at the constraints on each individual edge. We'll start with the following edge of the primary side PWM signal. Since we're using current mode control, we'll turn off the primary side switch when the sensed drain current exceeds the air amplifier output called V-loop. We'll also add a blinking time of 100 nanoseconds to prevent false tripping during the turn on of the switch. Next, let's look at the synchronous rectifier gating signal. We'll turn on the synchronous rectifier a short delay after the falling edge of the main PWM. We'll then turn off the synchronous rectifier when the voltage across the synchronous rectifier transistor rises above zero volts, indicating that the current has reversed. We'll add a 50 nanosecond delay or blanking time to ensure that the synchronous rectifier does not turn off too early. Finally, let's define the turn on edge of the primary switch. We'll need to connect a zero current detection or ZCD signal to the PWM, as we'll see in a few minutes. When that signal falls below ground, we know that we're at a valley. Thus, we'll configure the transistor to turn on when the ZCD signal falls below ground. To limit the switching frequency of the converter, we'll set a minimum period of 7 microseconds or a maximum frequency of 143 kilohertz. 
and a maximum period of 20 microseconds for a minimum frequency of 50 kilohertz. Now that we understand the principle of the valley switch flyback, let's look at how to implement it in Ada Designer. In Ada Designer, we've already created a fixed frequency flyback converter using the new converter wizard. This procedure has been shown in previous videos. I've configured the converter for an input voltage of 90 to 350 volts and an output of 20 volts at up to 3.25 amps for a 65 watt converter. I've moved the components to allow space to add the valley switch sense components and moved the rectifier to the low side in preparation to add the synchronous rectifier. I've also chosen a device model for the primary side transistor. Now we are ready to transform the converter to a quasi-resonant flyback. First, let's examine the transformer. We have a magnetizing inductance of 200 microhenry, a leakage inductance of 1 microhenry, a primary winding resistance of 0.3 ohms, and a secondary resistance of 4 milliohms. The turns ratio is about 18 to 2. We'll have to remember these values as we'll replace the transformer with one with an auxiliary winding. Let's modify the converter to place the transformer and add a synchronous rectifier. We'll start by replacing this diode with a MOSFET. We'll then choose a model for this device, choosing a transistor with a voltage rating between 100 and 200 volts. For this demo, we'll choose the Fairchild FDMS 86101 MOSFET. Next, we'll add a new transformer. From the place menu, we find a transformer with one primary, one secondary, and one auxiliary winding. The next step is to connect the transformer to the circuit, being careful of the polarity using the dot notation. Note that we're careful connecting the secondary side as the dot is on the wrong side of the winding. We'll then set the properties of the transformer to match our original flyback transformer. We'll set the magnetizing inductance to 200 microhenry the leakage inductance to 1 microhenry, the primary resistance to 0.3 ohms, and the secondary to 4 milliohms. The auxiliary resistance of 100 milliohms is fine. We'll set the primary turns count to 18 and the secondary to 2 turns. We'll then set the auxiliary to 2 turns as well. We'll now configure the controller for the new gating signals as well as the new sense signals. We'll double click the controller and then add a new output gating signal for the synchronous rectifier. Next, we'll add two new inputs, one for the synchronous rectifier sense and another for the zero current detect signal from the auxiliary winding. We'll drag the edges of the waveforms to correctly sequence them in time. Before editing the edge constraints, we need to add a new reference. We'll add a new reference and call it zero. We'll also set the value to zero. We'll use this new reference as a comparison to both the synchronous rectifier sense voltage and the, the zero current detect signal. The next step is to set the edge constraints for the synchronous rectifier. We'll double click on the rising edge and add a constraint. We'll set this as a delay constraint and set a value of 50 nanoseconds after the falling edge of the primary side PWM signal. Next, we'll constrain the falling edge of the SR gating signal by double clicking on that edge. We'll add an input compare constraint here. We'll set the SR transistor to turn off when the sense drain current is greater than zero, meaning that the current in the transistor has reversed. We'll then add another delay constraint to add some blanking time. We will require 
that the switch stays on for at least 50 nanoseconds after the rising edge of the synchronous rectifier. We'll now look at the falling edge of the primary side PWM. The first constraint is already set, where we turn off the switch when the sense drain current is above the V-loop error amplifier output. This is the key to implement a peak current mode controller. There's also a blanking time constraint here from the rising edge of the PWM. We'll extend the blanking time to 100 nanoseconds. Finally, we'll edit the rising edge of the primary side PWM. It starts with a fixed period, so let's add a couple more constraints to this edge. We'll use the first constraint to set the minimum period to 7 microseconds. We'll then set the second constraint to an input compare and set it to trigger when the zero current detect or ZCD signal falls below the zero reference. We're using the falls below relationship instead of less than to catch the exact time when the ZCD signal goes negative. If we had used the less than instead and the ZCD signal was negative at the time of the minimum period, it would trigger a turn on even if it wasn't during a valley. Since we use falls below, we ensure that the controller switches at a valley point. Finally, we'll set an OR logic relationship to the last constraint and use it to set a maximum period of 20 microseconds, set to, the, set to reference the rising edge of the primary side PWM. Now that the controller is defined, we'll click OK and now wire up the newly defined signals. We'll start by connecting the synchronous rectifier gate signals to the controller SR output. We now want to connect the two new sent signals. We'll want to add filters to both to avoid noise coupling into the sense pins. For the synchronous rectifier sent signal, we'll add a simple RC filter to the signal. We'll add a resistor and then a capacitor and then wire the components up. We'll set the resistor value to 200 ohms and the capacitor value to 10 picofarad. We'll now add an RC network to sense the zero current crossing from the auxiliary winding. We'll add a capacitor, a resistor, and then a ground symbol. We'll also connect the other side of the auxiliary winding to ground. We'll now wire up the components and connect them to the ZCD controller pin. Now we'll set the value of the resistor to 200 ohms, then set the value of the capacitor to 100 picofarads. Now that the circuit is all set up, we'll run a transient simulation to verify circuit operation. The startup transient response looks good and a near steady state operation is reached. The controller can later be tweaked to improve the transient response. We can zoom into the near steady state waveform. First we see the transformer current ramping up when the primary side gate, shown in red, is on. When the primary side switch turns off, you can see the current transfer to the secondary winding in blue. Our synchronous rectifier controller in green acts appropriately to turn on the SR switch when there's positive secondary side current. Next, let's look at the primary side switch drain voltage. We see that the primary side switch always turns on in the valley, minimizing switching loss and maximizing efficiency. Based on load, you can see the converter automatically switching between the third and fourth valley. Now, let's look at how the waveforms vary in real time when the input voltage is moved down or is increased. In all of these cases, you see that we're always switching at a valley, and also that the synchronous rectifier is working effectively. We can see the same thing as we change the output current as well. When we increase the low current, the switch on time increases and we switch at an earlier valley. As the load decreases, 
the switch on time decreases and we wait for a later valley to turn on the primary side transistor. To wrap things up, I hope this video has demonstrated that it's easy to create a complex controller for a topology like the quasi-resonant flyback in Ada Designer. By using your imagination, you can create complex constraints on PWM edges to design your desired converter controller. I hope you've enjoyed this video and have learned how to use Ada Designer to design and optimize your power converter projects. Please check us out at adadesigner.com to download a trial version and to view more videos like this one. Thanks.